Welcome back to the 31 Days of Halloween. It is October 2nd, and today we will be talking about my top five spooky movies for Halloween. Now, making this video is really hard for me. It's really easy on one hand because I actually studied film in college. I was a film major, and what that meant was I took a lot of film history classes and we watched a lot of really obscure, weird, rare stuff that you would never really watch. Although nowadays with cool channels like uh, Turner Classic Movies and AMC, um, that stuff is really a lot easier to watch than it was when I was in college. But at the time I was like, what is all this stuff? Like it was like this cool, it was this really cool discovery process for me. And I was blessed, I, and I was lucky enough to watch a lot of really cool, interesting movies that really sunk into my head and kind of had an influence on me as I went down the path of trying to be a filmmaker myself. So what makes this video hard for me is narrowing it down to just five spooky movies because I love spooky movies. I'm not really like necessarily a horror genre aficionado. Like I'm not one of these people that's watched like every Hammer movie there is. But obviously I love the gothic aesthetic and I love movies that are have a beautiful darkness and spooky flair to them, like Tim Burton movies, for example. And so picking just five is hard, but I'll do my best and here we go. Number five from Italy is a film called Suspiria. It's directed by a legendary Italian horror director named Dario Argento. Um, he was known for having an extremely creepy visual style that was also extremely beautiful. So Suspiria is one of those movies, the colors are stunning, it's a lot of reds and dark black shadows. And the thing that I enjoy the most about Suspiria is the amazing soundtrack, which will stay in your head forever. It's, it was made by this Italian band called Goblin. La 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 la. La 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 So it is kind of violent and if that if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff I wouldn't recommend it but if you do enjoy a good scary a little bit violent movie Suspiria is awesome, it's beautiful, and it has an amazing soundtrack. Check it out. Number four, The Ring. So The Ring is an American remake of a Japanese horror movie called Ringu. I've seen them both. Um, they're both amazing. The Japanese one is amazing. Personally, I like the American one better. Uh, I think it's visually superior. I think Verbinski did all the right things in staying true to the Japanese story and everything that made that story scary, but just infusing it with such visual beauty that for me, the American one is more enjoyable. They're both great. A lot of credit also has to go to Naomi Watts who portrays the lead role really amazingly. Basically the movie is about a video cassette that's haunted, and which is a really cool concept. Like, if you watch this video, you will die. Like, that's the premise. Like, right there, like, you tell me that premise, I want to watch this thing already. And then the way in which it plays out, the way in which this video kills you, is really, really creepy and scary too, because it doesn't kill you right away. You have three days, I believe. I think it's three days. But in those three days, like you live in horror and then the way in which you die is horrific. This movie is not so much about the violence, it's more about the suspense and the creepiness. You know, if you're, if you're not a fan of violence but you do want a good scare, this is a good one to watch. I really recommend it. Number three is The Bride of Frankenstein. I wanted to pick a movie from the golden age of the monster era, the Universal Monsters. In the 1930s, uh, Universal Studios kind of pioneered this concept of the classic Hollywood monster. We had movies about Dracula, we had movies about Frankenstein, we had movies about the werewolf, the mummy. All of these classic monsters were given a new life in the 1930s Hollywood that just became so iconic. And to this day, everyone is familiar in one way or another with like Bela Lugosi's Dracula or Boris Karloff's Frankenstein. Personally, my favorite is The Bride of Frankenstein because it was made a little bit later in the era and by that time, the genre had started to make fun of itself a little bit. They had really found the humor in itself. And I think The Bride of Frankenstein is a hilarious movie. It's about uh, Dr. Frankenstein wanting to create a partner for the Frankenstein monster he created because, you know, Frankenstein got lonely. So he puts together this woman just like he did with Frankenstein. And she's so cool looking. She has this huge 
kind of like Marge Simpson, black and white hair. They bring her to life, and the funny thing is that she wants nothing to do with the Frankenstein monster, so the whole reason they made her is kind of pointless, which is hilarious. And again, like all films of that era, of the 30s Universal Monsters era, it is gorgeous, black and white cinematography, amazing art direction, designs, costumes. It's, I mean, if you've never seen one of those films, maybe go back and watch the original Dracula and Frankenstein, but this should be close on your list. Bride of Frankenstein, amazing. You're gonna love it. Number two, Beetlejuice. Of course I have to put a Tim Burton movie in there. I was trying to keep this list mostly with films that maybe not everyone's heard of, but I had to put a Tim Burton movie in there even though you guys are probably very familiar with Tim Burton. Now I'm a massive Tim Burton fan. I love almost all of his films and out of every single one, I have to say Beetlejuice is my favorite. I think the reason I love Beetlejuice so much is because not only is it creepy and beautiful, it is absolutely hilarious. It's one of the most original ghost stories I've ever seen. The story is brilliant, it's hilarious, it's about this recently deceased couple that doesn't like the family that moved into their house and they're trying to get rid of them. So they recruit the help of this crazy entity named Beetlejuice who's played brilliantly by Michael Keaton and so he helps them haunt this house. I wouldn't say it's a scary movie by any means, it's definitely a comedy, it has its creepy moments, but, um, but I think when you're talking about Halloween movies, Beetlejuice has to be at the top of that list. Everything about it screams Halloween. If you haven't seen it, it's a must-see film for this season. And number one, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. The Cabinet of what? What's he talking about? What is this? Okay, so this one's a little bit obscure. If you guys are horror films or you're goths, you probably totally know what this is, but most people are probably thinking, the cabinet of what? So the cabinet of Dr. Caligari is a German film from 1920. It's almost a hundred years old. What's so amazing about this film to me is that it invented a visual style that still influences art and films today. It came out of an art and film movement in Germany called German Expressionism. So everything you see in the movie has this incredible visual style. It's very strong, very striking, a lot of contrast, a lot of angular lines everywhere. And it feels kind of like an animated film come to life almost. It's very bizarre. The story's really creepy and weird. It's about this traveling entertainer guy who goes around with the circus and he has this somnambulist in a box. A somnambulist, I guess, is a guy who uh, is a sleepwalker. He walks in his sleep. But anyway, he, this Dr. Caligari has the ability to control this guy and have him carry out these evil deeds because I guess he himself is evil. So it's a very creepy, spooky premise, very psychological, and it's considered by most historians to be the first true horror movie ever made. So it kind of is a big deal. If you want to know the history of horror movies and spooky films, watch The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. So there you have it. Those are my top five spooky movies for Halloween. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you watched them. If you've seen any of these films and you love them as much as I do, Comment me below, let me know which one. And if there's a great Halloween film you wanna tell me about, also comment below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget that every day this month, there's a new video, 31 days of Halloween. Tune in tomorrow where I will discuss what it means to be goth. Bye.